fourth graders, glad you could join us today. My name is Stephanie Horsley and I'm the director at Clay County Heritage Center. Um, you are here at Parker Museum today and um, I have my colleague with us, Braden Feline, who's the director of collections. Hi. And we wanted to show you Parker Museum. But first I wanted to do a special thank you to the Spencer Signal for filming us today and getting this video ready. So um, I will go ahead and start talking about uh, a quick history of the Parker Museum. This house was built in 1916 by the Roy Webb family. Um, he was a prominent stock breeder in the area and the first um, president of the uh, Spencer, or the, sorry, the Clay County Fair. And um, so as you can kind of see around the room, this house does look a lot older than maybe some other houses you're used to. We have original woodwork and original light fixtures like up here. Um, so you will get to see a lot of things uh, that belong to the people that lived here and things that were donated to us. Um, in late 1928, the house was bought by Reverend James and Cordelia Parker, and we have a picture over here of them in their later years. They had one son, James, who lived here, and um, they actually, along with some other citizens in Clay County, formed the Parker Historical Society of Clay County in this very living room in 1960, which was 60 years ago now. So um, I will go ahead and let Braden show you a couple things in this room. Uh, so one of the favorites we have is the Victrola here. is what they would listen to music on. So this would be like their uh, CDs, MP3s, you know, what we listen to music now, this is how they did. Uh, and then one of the other things is we have an organ over here that is uh, from 1880. And so that's one that you would pump with your feet. And that uh, was another way that they did entertainment. Uh, and then through here into this room, we have a cylinder phonograph, which is very similar to the Victrola, but a little bit louder. So that was another way that they listened to music. This is a square piano, which I'm sure many of you have never seen one before. And the reason for that is uh, when these were created, there was just the big grand pianos and they didn't have upright pianos yet. And so they created these as kind of the home version. Well, they didn't stay in tune very well. So when the upright pianos, like the one we have over here, started to become popular. The companies bought up all the square pianos and sent them to a beach in North Carolina and stacked them up and burned them to eliminate that competition and as a way to promote upright piano sales. Nice. All right, we are finding ourselves in the dining room. And before I pick up anything, I want to point out that I'm wearing some gloves. They look like gloves that Vicky or Minnie Mouse wear. And the reason why we have to wear gloves when we touch artifacts is because we have oils on our hands that you can't really see, but they are there. And if we always touch artifacts or older things with your hands, it can um, those oils can eventually damage the artifacts. So we protect them by wearing the gloves over here is a neat little contraption. No, it is not a VR headset. This is called a stereoscope. And what you do is you look inside. Ooh, can you see? It makes the two images on the other, on, on the other end look 3D. I know it's probably hard to see right now, but someday when you come back, you can look through the stereoscope. There's a photo in here from the late 1800s of an, a store in Okaboji. And 
on this wall behind me, I want to point out some of these photos. It looks like these people are going to a wedding because all the ladies are dressed up really fancy in white and the boys are wearing um, nice suits. They are actually in their high school senior photos. So um, the top one up here is of Mrs. Parker and she's standing um, in the second row to the left, the very left. And um, she graduated, I believe in 1900. And um, her sister, Mabel, was in the class of 1902 and, and they both graduated from Spencer. And Mabel is located right here. So these are all Spencer graduating classes and it's really neat to see. Um, there aren't a lot of boys in those pictures. Maybe you can think about why there wouldn't be a lot of boys graduating. The reason was we live in an agricultural area and most boys that went to school were done by eighth grade or sooner because they had to help out on the farm when they got uh, big enough and strong enough to do things on the farm. I know my grandpa um, was done with his education in eighth grade, so that's a lot different than today. And in here, this was uh, Reverend Parker's study. We have a ton of his books and writing in here, um, a lot of his kind of technological um, items that he collected, such as this Kodak camera. Cameras anymore are, are on our phones, um, or maybe some of you have some fancier cameras, but that is at least 100 years old. We have a slide projector right here, and it used glass slides. And that would project the image onto a screen or onto the wall in front of you. And then back here, I love this part back here. Um, we have a couple pictures of James, their son. He was three years old and they lived in Minneapolis. Um, the picture over here shows him typing on a typewriter. Some of you may have seen a typewriter before, but this is the exact same typewriter that he is using over there. And then um, if you want to take a peek in this closet, this is a really cool closet. Um, we have a lot of books in there, but it actually connects to the front door. So people who were visiting Reverend Parker could come through the front door and just walk all the way through to his office area. All right, so I think we will go back to the kitchen now. kitchen we have the original cabinets with the nice glass inside and they updated the countertops in the 40s uh, when the Parkers permanently moved here. This was actually their summer home until they got stuck here during World War II and realized how great the heat was and so they also put in these more modern appliances because before it would have been a oil uh, burning stove like the one over here in this corner. So this is what they would have had up until the 50s in here. Uh, and you may have noticed with the cabinets, they're very tall. So like for instance, I'm here, I can barely reach this flat footed. I have to stand on my tiptoes to open that. And Mrs. Parker was maybe five foot five so she would have been able to basically reach the top of the cabinets. So they definitely would have had to use uh, little step stools and everything else in the kitchen to reach their top cabinet. Uh, if we come this way, we have an ice chest here. So before refrigerators, they would come and they would put ice in these so in that way, you would be able to keep things cold. So you'd have a big block of ice that would cover the bottom, and then you'd put anything that needs to keep cold in here. And that was how they would refrigerate things back.
for refrigerators. They also had like this from Spencer Dairy Products that was here in town. This is a milk box that they would then put their bottles, their empties in, and the milkman would come to the back door, come in, check the box, and replace whatever was in here with full ones. So they always had fresh milk. Great, all right, we are to the stairs, and there's an awesome basement to check out, so let's check it out. This is our general store section of the basement. We have hundreds of items down here that you would find in a general store, um, maybe 100, 150 years ago. So you have things to use in the kitchen, things to use all over your house. Kind of lets you look at some of the shelves with items. You can see up here we have some lanterns. So before electricity was used in homes, people had lanterns and candles that they lit their homes with when it was dark. We've got some cool marbles. Kids would play with marbles, lots of different games using those. Lots of different glass bottles of things that you can see because plastic has not always been around so they used glass for bottles or wood. All right, as we walk back into this area, you can see that this section of the room is set up like a one-room schoolhouse. And some of you have been to our one-room schoolhouse out by the Aquatic Center. Um, you can see all the desks we have set up. The one-room schoolhouse would include um, everybody, all ages, from first grade up until at least eighth grade, maybe older to twelfth grade. And so the younger kids would be up front and the older kids in back. We have some pails where kids would bring their lunch because there was no hot lunch at the one-room schoolhouse. Um, if you needed to wash your hands, you could do that here with the bucket and the dipper. Dry your hands on the cloth. Um, the schools would have portraits of President George Washington and President Lincoln. And of course, your school would have to be heated by a stove, a um, wood-burning stove, because there wouldn't be central heat to keep you warm. Also, they didn't have whiteboards or smart boards to look at up front, so you would use a chalkboard to write answers on, and the teacher would use one too. Over here, we have this side set up like an old country kitchen. So I'm sure you're all familiar with bread. Well, bread didn't become sliced until the 1920s. That happened here in Iowa. So they would actually have to make their own bread. So here we have a bread maker. And actually, this table is what they call a bread table. So what you would do is you would open the top and you would have all your flour down here. So then you could work on your dough up here and then you would bake it in your stove or uh, over your fire, which this would be like a stove that they had at the time that they would burn uh, wood in or coal or often they would burn corn cobs because those were fairly easy to get to out in the country. And this would be a cabinet that they would keep everything that they needed in. And you might have noticed like up here or even up on top of this Everything is in either kind of like a cardboard type or most are metal that they had as containers. They didn't have plastic containers or uh, they didn't use a lot of bag containers and they got their flour in like sacks that they would then reuse and sometimes they would make dresses out of those flour sacks.
Now we'll go this way, past our washing supplies into this room. Uh, so in this room, the reason why there are two doors on this wall is this one was the wood room. So that's where they would stack all of their firewood for the year, or for the winter in that room. And this room was the coal room. So outside, uh, there's a coal chute that comes down into this room that's now been covered, but then they would fill this room with coal and then they could get it out and they could feed it into the boiler or they could take it up and put it in the stove uh, for cooking. Uh, and then of course, one of our volunteers always loves to show the geode, which this one came from Keokuk here in Iowa. And I believe it's also our state rock. So she always loves to show it off. And so when you come to visit, you can actually feel the inside of the geode and feel how it feels in there. Uh, and then a few other things we have that are neat. So these are actually bison horns, which if you go down by Peterson to the O'Brien County Conservation, they actually have some bison that they have roam around their land down there. So you can actually see what a real live bison looks like. You probably noticed there are a lot of rocks in this room, and that's because the Parkers like to travel, and they collected things when they traveled. So they have pieces of coral, uh, they have a little alligator skin up here, a snake skin, uh, that you can all see when you come to visit us sometime. done with the basement now we just need to go to the second floor and look and see what's up there so let's go all right here we are on our way upstairs to where the bedrooms and bathroom is and Brayden has something cool to show us with the stairs that you may have never seen before. Yes, this house has a pocket door that they could pull across and separate the downstairs from the upstairs. So if uh, they were having like a dinner party downstairs, they could send all the kids upstairs to play and they could close this door to cut down on the noise that's coming from upstairs. This is our Northwest bedroom. It was actually a bedroom that James, their son, used when they lived here. And we currently have it set up like a Victorian, uh, with, with Victorian decorations. And um, there's just lots of lace, crocheted items in here that you can take a look at. This is really neat. We have it on a lantern. But I like to ask kids what they think this is. It's actually a curling iron, and the way you would heat it up, because there's no plug-in, is you set it on top of the lantern to get heated up. And these right here are hat pins. So when women wore big hats over their hair, they could use these pins to keep it on their head so it wouldn't go flying off. Another neat thing that we have just right behind here is a baby um, baby uh, crib <laughs> and there's a little guy in there that used to use it. His name was Tom Cornwall. Okay, so we will join Brayden over here in this room. Hello everyone, so we are in what would have been the guest bedroom, uh, 
right now we have it set up with traveling items because the Parkers like travel so much. And some of the unique features about this room is it has its own fireplace and its own sink in the corner. So that guests could wash up and separate whenever they wanted from the rest of the house. And then they could control their own heat. And so that's kind of really neat. Also, you might have noticed uh, in all of the rooms, they have picture rails running on the walls instead of the pictures just hanging on the walls. And the reason for that is the way these walls are made, they wouldn't be able to hold the weight of a picture hanging on a nail. And so they use the picture rails that then you can adjust your uh, cable length on how low you want the picture to hang. And so it makes it easier to change out photos. If you want to rearrange photos, it's really easy with the uh, cables that they use or strings to adjust your height on photos. So we're going to go to the master bedroom. This is a really neat large room. As you come in here, you can see that there's even like a sun porch or sun room area back here. And this would have been uh, Reverend and Mrs. Parker's room. We have a brass bed and uh, that belonged to them along with some other furniture. There's some pictures of James over here um, and other family members on the wall. Right now we have some um, heavy coats. It's going to be winter here before long, and so we brought out some neat, this is a fur coat that somebody donated to us. And then over here, we have a treadle sewing machine. And this was Mrs. Parker's foot pedal singer sewing machine. all the little items that go with sewing. So then back here on the sun porch, we have what's called a fainting couch. Um, in the heat of the day during the summer, people would come onto a porch, open up all the windows, and then they could rest on this couch and be nice and cool out of the heat um, because homes did not have air conditioning back then, which is hard to imagine. We also have some information about the Parker family, and that's a picture of Reverend and Mrs. Parker when they were younger. And it talks about their family and um, all their brothers and sisters. So you'll have to be able to come back and look through this. We can talk about it more when you visit. All right, and there's one more bedroom to see that Brayden will show us. And the bathroom. And the bathroom. Yeah. We'll go to the bathroom first. Great. Uh, so this is the bathroom that's original to the house. The Parker house is one of the first in Spencer that had indoor plumbing and electricity. Uh, and as you can probably tell, uh, the sink is very different. It has two faucets. Now, if you're here, I'd ask you, why do you think there are two faucets? And typically people say, oh, one's hot, one's cold. Well, they each have hot and cold. And then people say one for him, one for her. But the real reason is one is the well water or hard water. So that'd be like city water and other things. The other one is soft water or rain water that they get from their cistern. Uh, this house, when it was built, had a gutter system that would go down into a cistern. So that's why they had two different faucets. And this button in the middle is what they call waste. That's the, on your sink at home, you might have a little thing that sticks out above your faucet that you pull up and it closes the drain. That's what this does. And then they have their toilet that's in the wall. And then these two pieces were actually brought in later. These are from a 
hairdresser or a salon here in town. This is a hair curler, not a torture device. We've heard that a few times on tours. And then this is a hair dryer. Here, I'll get out of the way so you can see the tub. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, what did they do if they didn't have a house with a toilet inside? Well, they would have an outhouse or they would use uh, what we call a chamber pot, which would just be like a little pot that they keep in their room that they would use at night if they had to go to the bathroom, especially during the winter because it's very cold between the house and the outhouse. And then in the morning, they would have to go dump them into the outhouse. Uh, so we'll go this way into the last bedroom. In here, we have set up as a playroom right now. Uh, and then here is Cordelia's desk that she would write. She really loved to write notes and letters to people. And so it wouldn't be out of the ordinary for her to be writing letters while James is playing with toys. And so that's why we have it set up this way. Now, as you can see, they have tons of books. Uh, most of these are children focused, along with several different kinds of toys. house actually has a laundry chute which you might see in a lot of older homes so this is where they would come in and they would put all their clothes in and drop it down to the basement where they would then wash them all right guys we are done with the upstairs concludes our Parker tour for today and we are so glad that you joined us. Make sure to call the Clay County Heritage Center if you would like to see the Parker Museum. Again, we have it open for appointment. So thanks for coming. Thank you. Bye. We look forward to seeing you.